here for the Alameda Strong Grant. And today I'm going to talk about the guidelines. Um, and if you have questions, if you could enter them into the chat box. Then I'm going to also demonstrate the form. And then I'm going to answer um, your, your questions. So applications are due on Tuesday, the uh, September the 8th at um, 11.59 p.m. And the cutoff time is computer generated. So I would suggest that you get your information in at least a couple of hours before, just in case you have any, any issues with your computer or with the internet, uh, you'll have time to uh, get your information in. The grants are um, 7,500 for um, businesses with uh, physical spaces in Alameda, uh, commercial spaces other than residents. If you have a residence in Alameda, then uh, the grant is uh, $3,750. So um, small businesses can have up to 25 employees. And if you're a restaurant, there's no limit on the number of employees. Um, if you have two business locations in Alameda, you can have up to 50 employees. Again, restaurants, there's no limit on the number of employees. Uh, you must show that you have a loss of at least 50% or more. Uh, due to COVID-related um, events um, from March uh, 16th um, to the current application date. Um, and you also must have a current business license. If you are on park, in the park area or the Webster Street area, and you are part of the BIA, your uh, BIA fees must be up to date. And the deadline for those fees uh, was uh, September 1st. So you must have your, um, your payments in uh, for um, BIA's fees, excuse me, and your business license already. Uh, financial institutions, banks and lenders, landlords, publicly traded uh, companies, elected officials, appointed officials, city employees, and relatives of elected officials and appointed officials, and uh, city employees um, aren't able uh, to uh, utilize this program. So if you're, if you're elected, appointed, or a city employee, you're not qualified. Also, if you're related to one of those, you're not qualified. Um, if you are a nonprofit, we will have another grant application in the uh, future um, for you. Uh, you're not able to apply for this grant. And funds can be used to pay rent, operating expenses, and or payroll. You should keep all of your receipts in case uh, the city requests them. And we uh, do reserve the right to audit your records. Now, when you're preparing to fill out this application, what you should do is get all of your information together, uh, scan it, put it in a folder so that you can upload it because uh, you'll see later, um, it needs to kind of be in one place for you to fill out this application. And I'll go through how I have um, everything in a folder and then I'm able to go through the process really quickly and upload it. And then we're going to go online. Um, I'm going to use this link um, to go online. Um, and when you go online, you're going to need um, a um, to uh, create a password, your, your username and password. When I go online, it'll already be there because I've been online before. But when you go online, it will ask you to create a username and password. So please think about, you know, what your username and password is going to be. And this will be the way that we're going to communicate with you is through this application. 
So you need to keep your username and password. I'm sure there's a way to reset it. Um, your application needs to be 100% and all documents um, um, sub are subject to Public Records Act. So I'm now gonna go back to this uh, slide and I'm gonna show you what the site looks like. Um, so this is our Alameda Strong site. And um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this site in the chat. Just bear with me for a second, I'm gonna copy it. And then I'm gonna put it in the chat. Uh, I don't know how to do that. <laughs> it's not coming up. Amanda. So are you trying to put the link to the relief fund in the chat? Yeah. I, I did that. It's, it's there now. Okay. Okay. And then um, this is just our site. So um, what I'm going to do is um, show you can you guys see? What can you see? I see the uh, form demonstration page. Okay. Uh, um, up from the um, slides. Okay, what, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stop sharing. And I'm gonna go to um, another link. And then I'm going to share this page. issues. Sorry, you guys. Clicked on the wrong page. So what I did is, um, is um, I, what I did is I shared um, the link. I went from this Alameda Strong page. You guys can see that, correct? And then I, I went to submit here and it brings me to this page here. So this is where you would need to sign in and, um, and, and apply. And when you hit apply, it's gonna ask you for your password. What it does for me is it just sends me to the page. And um, now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go through, I created a special page for this session. It's called the training page, but it's exactly the same. And I'm going to go through um, and talk about the application process. So uh, again, with this program, the grants are 7,500. If you're in a commercial space, 3,500, 30, uh, sorry, 3,750. If you are um, if you are in a residence. Um, Again, um, these applications are due on September the 8th at 11.59 p.m. And um, you should receive funding. If you, if, you are, if you get a grant from us, you should receive your funding within 30 days. Now, the eligibility um, requirements, it, I, I talked about uh, a couple of them already. Um, you, you have to be a small business up to 25 employees, um, and it's a full-time equivalent. So if you have, for example, if you have, say you have um, 32 employees, um, and um, they were all part-time, they worked 50% of a full-time schedule, those 32 employees would equate to 16 employees. And so even though you have 32 employees, 
The full-time equivalent of that would be um, 16 employees. So you, you can have, um, uh, say you have um, uh, Let's say you have 35 employees and 10 of those, um, actually that doesn't work. If you have 15 employees that were full-time and then you had 15 employees that are part-time, those 15 employees would, would turn into uh, 7.5 employees and then you add that to the uh, 15 employees and then you have 22.5 employees. So you don't go over just because you have more employees. It's you have to make sure that you're calculating the equivalent employee. Um, if you have problems with that, submit your your paperwork. If you think you're close to 25 um, equivalent employees, or if you have two locations, if you're close to 50 uh, equivalent employees, submit your information and we'll do the calculation. Okay. All right. Um, only one employee, uh, excuse me, one application per business can um, be submitted. Uh, you get disqualified if you submit more than one um, application. You must, again, have a current business license in Alameda and current your, your BIAs these must be um, up to date, they must, must be current. Uh, to qualify, um, you're gonna need these documents. You're gonna need proof that you've applied for federal funds or state funds. Uh, for some of you who have um, small businesses, um, pandemic unemployment insurance counts. So you can submit that or PPE, or you know that you you may have applied for a Facebook grant. Um, um, if you don't, uh, if you didn't, uh, some people uh, may not qualify to apply for state or federal um, assistance. If you don't qualify for state or federal assistance, um, but you um, uh, could have qualified for some grants. We would want you to also show that you qualified for um, a grant program. So um, what I say to people is just put in um, what you have and we'll look at it and see if you're qualified. If, um, if you're not qualified, we'll follow up with you and tell you um, that that document doesn't qualify and whether you have something else. So go ahead and put it in. Um, and, and I'll show you shortly how to put it in. Uh, we need six months uh, revenue income um, and expense income. So that's a, um, a six month income statement, but income statements have revenue and expense on them. So we would like to see that. Uh, for some of you, you have a merchant account and that's all you use. So six months of the merchant account bank statement would be fine. And um, then we need your revenue from um, July 2019, and then again, July 2020. Um, and that could be your, your merchant statement from your bank. Um, um, and, and if you use two different merchant um, sources, like some folks have uh, Square, and then they have for their cash, they have their bank statement. So if you use um, more than one source, we need both sources. If you have a regular income statement uh, generated by you or by your accountant, uh, then uh, we would want that and your revenue statements, the same for that. If you have a regular um, revenue statement, we would want that. And then we need your second quarter DE9 form. If you have more than, uh, if you have one employee or more, um, you would have a DE9 and a DE9C statement um, that's required uh, by law. So you, you would need to um, provide that. If you have 1099 um, forms, uh, we don't need your 1099 forms. You should just state that you, you 
um, if that's all you have, that you don't have an employ any employees. But if you use both 1099 employees and W-2 employees, we need your DE-9 and DE-9C forms. And then we also need your um, W-9 form. Um, we also have um, put the, D, uh, the W-9 form here. You can, you can electronically fill it out, but you need to make sure you sign, uh, sign the form. All right. And then um, again, eligible uses of the form, uh, of the funds, excuse me, uh, you can use them to pay rent, use them for operating expenses and payroll. And um, you, should, you should read through all of this. Um, we, the city have disclosures here and we wanna make sure that you, you read all of the disclosures as well. If you have questions, please contact either me or Eric Fonstein, who is on the screen right now with me, um, and our email addresses, phone numbers are here. Um, and then if you're having technical um, issues, please uh, contact support at submittable.com, which is also here. So I'm gonna go through and fill out this form for you so that you can see how easy it is to fill out. Uh, my name, um, business name uh, is uh, Butler Project Management. Name of my own business. My first name is Lois. You can see I filled this out before Butler. Um, my primary phone number is here, my secondary phone number. This only comes up because I put it in before. And then my email address um, is also here. Um, I own the business by myself, so I didn't I need to put this secondary person in, but if, if somebody owns 50% um, or less of your business, I, I'd like you to fill this out. Um, and, and also give their primary email address. Um, the country, unfortunately, we have to fill it out. Uh, it's the, uh, this isn't one of those type in ones either. So I have to go down and find the United States. Um, we passed it. Okay. There it is. Um, and then I put in my address. So since I put it in before, it's automatically populating. Um, and then if my mailing address is any different, I'm gonna need to put in my mailing address as well and go through the same steps. Okay. Um, So I can type United and it does come up United for United States. And that, that's a little bit faster in California. Um, and now I'm at the point where I'm gonna start putting in forms soon. Um, it asks me uh, the type of business. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna say I was a small business um, I don't have any employees, so I'm going to put uh, up to 25 employees because I don't have any. And then I'm going to select the best fit uh, business. And um, I'm going to say uh, uh, service because I do project management, say. And then um, I want to know whether you are a physical, if you have a, a physical non-residential um, address, and I'm gonna say no, because I am in my home. But if I, if I wasn't in my home, I had a brick and mortar location, 
in um, Alameda, then I would say yes, but that's not the case, so I'm gonna say no. Um, and then do I plan on closing in the next uh, six months? I'm gonna say yes, um, because if I say no, I won't get the grant, but you should be truthful because uh, we will um, ask you to repay the grant if you um, had planned to close your business. Um, things happen, but we, we would have to, um, we would have to talk with you and get explanations from you. Um, so if you're planning on closing your business, it's best not to apply for this grant. Um, and, and then uh, we're asking you questions about closing your business if you're saying you're closing. Um, is your business closed now? You're not, uh, you're not going to be penalized for this if your business is closed and uh, you can't open right now. A, a number of businesses can't open right now, but um, there, there is a slight penalty if you can open and you're not open. And that was uh, um, a requirement of the city council. So I'm going to say I'm closed, but I can't open right now because um, the uh, health department doesn't allow it. And then um, am I planning or are you planning to open when the shelter in place is lifted? I would say yes to that as soon as possible because I need money. Um, and then I'll give a brief explanation here. Uh, shelter, shelter in place uh, orders do not allow me to open. Or, you know, for some people, uh, they have health issues and that's why they're not opening. Um, that will take, be taken into consideration if you say you have health issues and you can't open. Um, but you don't have to disclose your health issues. That will be taken into consideration. If you say you just want to wait, then um, if you can't open, uh, you will have a slight penalty. Um, is your business considered essential? Uh, if you would answer yes or no, I'm going to answer no on this. Um, and then I want to select a location. Um, so I will say that I'm at Alameda Point because that's where my office is in, in Alameda. And then um, do you have a current uh, copy of your business license? I'm going to say no. Um, you can say yes. If you say yes, then um, unfortunately this is up above, but it, it's asking to choose um, – um, a copy of the certificate if you say yes. So I'm going to put business license in since I said yes. And you see how I um, went to that file. I'll do it slower next time. This, this pops up. Um, if you need to upload more than one page, another pop up. Um, so if I had two pages saved separately, I would just go ahead and select my second page and, and upload it. So now I'm going to the next question. Um, my W-9, um, I showed you how, where to go to fill it out. You would need to save that and then upload it. So um, I've already saved it and I, now I'm gonna go slower and hopefully you guys can see this. I'm gonna choose the file. Can you guys see my files here, Eric? Yes. Okay. So you see how I organize all of these files so that I can just choose my file. So I'm going to choose my W9 and it's just, it's just one page. And then I, I open it and I'm able to upload it. So given that I'm very organized and all my files are labeled, um, I'm able to do this really quickly. I don't have a second page, so I'm going to skip this choose file. Sorry. 
and I'm going to go down to the next line. Um, provide proof that your company has applied for uh, state or federal assistance. I'm going to choose my file. Um, I, um, I'm looking for, oh, here it is, proof I applied for federal and state assistance. Open and upload. On this one, um, uh, I get a question about what is um, proof. The application itself is proof if you have a filled out application. If you have a number from um, SBA, for example, most of the numbers start with a, a three. Um, if your number starts with a two and you haven't reapplied, you need to reapply for your SBA loan. But um, most of them start with a three um, and it's a, it's a long number. So um, you can uh, upload a copy of that with your name on it. It says your business name and it gives a number. You can upload a copy of that. Um, you can upload if you had a PPP loan or PPP application. Um, you can upload um, the electronic uh, PPP receipt or, or the letter from the bank saying that, um, that they received your application. You can uh, upload the um, PPP um, uh, letter itself saying that you got a PPP loan. Um, if you had a pandemic unemployment insurance, you can upload proof of that by um, showing, um, showing, you know, your reporting on it or, um, or um, any other uh, item from the state that shows that you applied for um, PPP, uh, excuse me, unemployment um, pandemic insurance. And, um, and they, uh, they let you know that you've gotten an award so you can upload your award letter. Um, okay, proof of your uh, income for the past uh, six months from February to uh, July. I'm going to upload that. Um, so my six-month income statement. And... Um, if you have uh, one or more um, employees, um, please uh, say yes. I'm going to say no. And then how many employees do I have? I'm going to say zero. But whatever the number, if it's over 25 and some of them are part-time, you might say you have um, 100. And we did award to somebody who had uh, a lot of employees because those employees were working like an hour a week, uh, depending on um, the type of, of uh, employment. For some folks, uh, they do different things and it, it only requires um, people to come in once. Some people use employment as a hobby, so, um, but it helps out the employer. So put the correct number in there and then we'll make the determination of of how many employees you have if you if you can't make it if you can't calculate it and then um this is where you would uh if you had um if you if i'm gonna just put like one or for this purpose um and then i would um i would upload my d uh i don't know what's happening here I would upload these forms. It automatically populated. So what I'm gonna do is upload them again. Uh, D, DE9, and then I'm gonna choose my DE9C uh, form, okay? And then um, I'm gonna, Oh, I, I don't. Uh, 
I'm going to choose this again. Not sure what happened there. Um, all right, uh, revenues. I'm going to choose my uh, July 19, 2019 revenues. And July 20 revenues. So, you know, I kind of got confused because every time you choose something, it gives you another file um, to upload. So um, if you up upload something more than once, it's okay. Um, we will understand that that was just something um, when the file, when the second uh, part of that file came up. Um, I'm going to choose the July 2020 um, revenues, and um, and then I'm going to open it. And you can see how again it pops up in case I have more than one page. All right. So if you have, for example, Square, and then you have your bank statement, you would you would put your bank statement with the second pop up. So this. That was my first revenue. Say this was my bank statement, then the second one would be uh, my my Square account or something similar uh, for July, and I would just have another form. Okay. All right. So, um, and then if you're awarded this, uh, we have a form here that you could fill out to get electronic payment. And um, we're not sure if we could use this form, but it, so if you don't fill it out, it's okay. If you do fill it out, you might get your funds quicker. And the, the reason I say that is because we're going through a charitable uh, donation company. And um, so we need to work with them on that. So um, if, I, if I filled that form out, then I would just upload it again and it would be my, um, I'm not sure that I have that form here. I don't have that form here, but if you wanted to fill it out, you would just do the same thing. Now, um, one of the things that you need to do is read the statement here and then check the box and, and type in your name. And then um, at the end, you would go ahead and if you wanted to come back to it, save the draft, or if you thought everything was fine, you would go in and apply, and I'm gonna apply. So now it says that I entered an invalid address. So um, what I wanna do is enter my address. And then I have to, again, um, address. I have to again enter my country. Okay. Let me see if I can get rid of this altogether. Doesn't look like it, so I'm going to put in my address. Okay. And then I'm going to go back and apply. Good, I was successful. So when you have a red um, box, that means that you did something wrong, which I did. So that's it. I'm going to go back and um, stop sharing screen. And then I'm going to share my screen. And um, the last si slide is question and answer. I'm going to, there are a few questions that have come in, um, and I'm just going to go through them. Um, so the first one is if a business does not usually make income statements, only records, revenues and expenses separately in other non statement formats, 
nor does it use softwares like QuickBooks, which can generate income statements. What kind of other formats would suffice the requirement for the February through July income statement? If they don't make income statements, okay. So how do they do? Um, we can move on to the next question. We'll need some more feedback. How do they do their accounting for uh, taxes? They have to keep some type of record. If it's a ledger, um, do they do a ledger um, of, of, of income received and expenses? Or do they use bank, merchant bank statements? Um, they keep records of revenues and expenses separately in non-statement formats. I don't understand the non-statement format um, piece. So the, maybe the person who um, asked that question, maybe you could just enter a little follow-up information either in the chat or through the Q&A function, um, and then we'll, we'll come back to you. Um, and for, uh, so then I'm gonna go, there's some questions in the chat as well, and anyone who has any questions, you can enter them in the Q&A or through the chat function. So the next question is, what time period do you compare the loss? Do we calculate gross income or net income for March 2020 through September 2020? And then what time period do you compare it to? So I guess there's two questions there. Is it net or gross income? And then what are the time periods? So the time periods are March through February, excuse me, February through July. Um, 31st. That's the period that we're really looking at. Um, but um, we have used periods that are later, um, but um, the main period that we're looking at is um, from February through um, July 31st. And that's why we're asking you to provide uh, revenues for July. So July is the main month that we're looking at. So we need your revenues in July as well. And they should be gross revenues. We're not looking at net anything. Okay. Um, so there's someone who's asking if the receipt of federal or state funds affects chances with Alameda Strong. No. Okay. Um, and then there's a few questions about employment employees. Um, what if your one employee hit the 30 hour per week cutoff on some weeks in the first quarter and not in other weeks? So you just need to upload your information for your employee. It doesn't matter because you can have zero to 25 employees. What we're trying to really uh, find out is if you have over 25 employees, if you're if you have one business and over 50 employees if you have two businesses in Alameda. If you just have one employee, just put the information in. It's not going to impact you one way or the other. Okay. So the, um, there's also a question, if you have a half-time employee, do you count them as, do you enter 0.5? Yeah, you could just say 0.5. If it, if it doesn't accept 0.5, just put in one. It's not going to impact you one way or the other. Okay. Uh, and then um, here's someone, okay. As I understand it, a business having zero employees in the first quarter of 2020 can receive funding with this grant application. Unlike the first grant, we're having less than one disqualified applicant. That's, that's correct. That is correct. Okay. Um, and here's a question. Do you compare the February to July 2020 revenue to February, July 2019 to tell if the revenue has decreased by 50%? Um, correct. Okay. But we also want to make sure that um, information is consistent and that's why we ask for the um, income statement. So we, we need to see your consistency as well. So that's all the questions that have been submitted thus far. Um, if folks have any other questions, you can enter them in the chat function or in the Q&A box. Um, 
Can we go back to the person who, um, about the statement, have, have they entered any additional information? You know what, they just did. Um, they said, I record monthly revenues in an Excel format and I record expenses in an Excel format as well. So the closest thing I could possibly do is to sort the month column and list the expenses by month and somehow put the revenue and expenses together in an income statement format. We don't have a merchant bank account. Okay, so um, we have received income and expenses um, and, and they have been by date. So if you keep a running total of income and a running total of expenses and you don't separate them out, that's fine. As long as we see the running total of uh, income and expenses in those Excel forms, we're okay with that. Um, but we do need you to separate out July and July. So July 2019 revenue and July um, 2020 revenue, along with giving us your, your running statement of, of, of income and expenses for July in that separate spreadsheet. So my question to you is, does that help? Or, or do we need to uh, further explain that to you? That's, oh, thank you, that helped. <laughs> okay. And there's another question that just came in. Um, July versus 20, July 2019 versus July 2020 is not down by 50% that month in 20, that month in 2020 was a good month. I think maybe they're asking if they're not down 50% from July 2019 to July 2020, will that keep them from qualifying? Yes. So we'll wait a minute to see if any other questions come in. Um, and then you can always also contact Lois and Eric um, with additional questions. I'll, uh, put, oh, Steven's got one more. Take your time. In the meantime, I'm going to put um, Lois and Eric's email addresses in the chat function. All I ask is if you have a technical issue with submittable, to um, contact Submittable. And their information is in um, the application form as well as ours. I'm going to put the submittable um, email address as well in case people have technical issues. Okay. Oh wait. It does. Is, okay. We got the last question. Um, can I supply my revenue for July 2019 and my revenue for July 2020 in the form of a printout from my business management software, where yeah. I highlight the relevant number for your attention? Uh, yes. Um, but I don't. I don't necessarily need you to highlight the relevant number. It should be clear. Um, when we're reading the statements, um, um, we, we, we read a lot of different types of statements. So submit your information and let us figure it out. If we can't figure it out, we'll contact you. But it should be clear enough if you have a software um, um, that you use. I think we've seen several types of software. 
Oh, it sounds like we've got what, another question coming as well. That's fine. Am I supposed to just put a number into the blank or upload the report from my practice management software? Your, 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 your software should have um, um, a way to print out a statement for the month. Um, normally, we don't just accept one number for revenue. You should have, you should have more information for revenue. So we, what, I, what I can say is go ahead and um, uh, put in what you need to put in and if we need additional information we will contact you okay it looks like that got that answered their question so i think we've gone through all the questions now um thank you guys thank you all for uh for attending and um we look forward to working with you on the Alameda Grant Program. Yes, thank you very much. Looks like we have some more people who joined. <laughs>